you tell us right now. This is a, an active shooter situation here at River Chase Galleria here behind me. Just take a look at the scene. Uh, there's a lot of activity going on right now. We have the paramedics here. We have the firefighters and we have police. We have confirmed that this was an active uh, shooter inside. There's a lot of people actually walking away at this point. Uh, earlier, they were actually running away. I got the chance to speak with uh, three or four uh, folks on our Facebook Live who were very frightened, uh, extremely frightened because they just, you know, they're shopping. It's Black Friday. And they said uh, that there was a shooter uh, inside. Now, we have not uh, yet confirmed if anyone has died at this moment, at this point. We haven't talked to uh, Hoover Police or Jefferson County uh, on camera right now. So we're waiting uh, for this situation to die down a little bit until we actually uh, get official sound to see, just to make sure that everyone's okay. But it's very, very active right now. Uh, police are on the scene. Fire crews are on the scene. And there's still a lot of people that are kind of uh, leaving the area. Traffic out here is a nightmare uh, at this point. But again, just look at all the folks that are kind of standing around right here in front of Belk. Uh, we heard, uh, we, we, again, this is not confirmed, but we would heard that this happened around uh, Old Navy. But right now we're standing in the middle of Belk and J.C. Penney, uh, which is the majority of the traffic uh, kind of coming in and out right now. We're not sure if they've evacuated everyone inside the mall. But again, very active situation. A lot of frightened people at this moment. Uh, once we get more information, we will make sure that we bring it back uh, to you. But right now we're live in Hoover tonight. Corey McGinnis, CBS 42 News, local coverage you can count on. And we're working to uh, get Corey's uh, live shot situated where he can hear us. We can ask him some questions tonight. We know we're going to continue staying on the scene there. So reiterating what Corey is seeing on the scene right now, he said a large police presence. Uh, he saw people running from the Galleria earlier. You see him working to talk and communicate with people there this evening. Let's listen in. When we heard about it, like we, I, got, I checked Snap Map and like to see everyone who is here, because like that's how I find out who's wherever they are. Yeah. It was really scary though. They locked us down. They locked you guys down. Yeah, because there was a shooting at the mall, and so they locked us in. What's the first thing? I guess what was going through your mind? I was like, I need, I have no service. How am I gonna call like people and stuff? But I'm just glad we're all safe right now. How are you guys feeling? I mean, were you? I was a little shaken up, honestly. Yeah. yeah. But. I'm fine now. Still kind of scary though, right? You guys were out here just shopping. I mean, having a good time at Dave and Buster's. We were actually yeah. going to go in the mall right after. Wow. I know. Okay. And I was going to go to Belk, and I think that's I where it was. I didn't find you. <laughs> I know. I didn't know where she was at. She's my sister. So that's got to be kind of My little scary. sister. I didn't you know where she was we... at. We didn't have service inside. I was really worried she was inside the mall because I was like, we're just going to meet up later. Um, honestly, didn't know where you're at. So, kind of scary. Can you say and spell your name for me, guys? My name? Yeah. I'm Eliza Mullen. So that's Corey McGinnis live at the Galleria right now speaking with folks on the scene saying they're pretty scared. You can see people in decently good spirits right now giving that shots were fired at the Galleria in Birmingham. We want to reiterate if you're just joining us right now on CBS 42 as we work to get a uh, the ability to communicate with Corey more efficiently here. Lieutenant Keith Chescaliba with Hoover Police is on the scene. Uh, that's the public information officer for Hoover Police telling us they're working right now to get everybody cleared out of the uh, Galleria area tonight. And uh, this is the scene right now. You see, we want to say as well, early and often tonight, uh, how information often changes early on in these incidents. It looks as though Corey is going to speak with a woman who has uh, apparently seen some of what's going on there. We want to listen into this interview as well. I was uh, at, at a kiosk buying some jewelry right outside the food court on the, on the way towards, I was headed to Penny's, but I was right outside the food court and um, right, right as I was about to pay, I heard this bang it's hard to wrap your breath you're thinking okay probably not and then i heard bang bang and then it was terrifying and then everybody started screaming and running as far away from this as you could and i ran towards um uh the s servants exit i just happen to know about it i don't work here but i happen to know about it and um to get in the car with a friend of mine and then uh, we were just, it's gridlock over in the parking deck. And then 
coming around here to find my car and I just found my car. It was very scary. We're just learning breaking news in that shooting investigation as we come on the air. Good evening. I'm Jack Royer. Hoover police now say they believe the 21 year old Emantic Bradford was not the one that fired the shots that left an 18 year old injured inside the Galleria last night, and they believe a second gunman is believed to be still at large. In a release just sent by Hoover police, officers now say a review of new evidence shows that Bradford likely did not fire the rounds that injured the 18 year old victim, but he was branded a weapon. They now believe there are other people involved in that altercation. They say started it all. They believe the gunman that fired the shots, injuring one person at least, is still at large tonight. Let's get straight to CBS 42 News reporter Corey McGinnis. Corey, 24 hours ago, you were still there. A different scene right now, but a huge development tonight from police. Absolutely, Jack. A huge development. Now, earlier I got the chance to speak with Shannon Bennett. That's the 12-year-old Molly's stepmother. Earlier, she mentioned that her parents, uh, Julie and Rob, were too shaken up to speak with us uh, today on camera. However, her mother, uh, Julie, has been very vocal on social media, describing the accounts of what happened and how her daughter's doing now uh, in the hospital. All of this before this new information came out, so, uh, put the police searching for a second gunman. A 10-year-old juvenile patient shot in the buttocks. This is audio of the Hoover Fire Department detailing the unfolding events of the Thanksgiving shooting at River Chains Galleria, where a gunman died and two were wounded, including a 12-year-old girl. I need the closest unit to respond to the 10-year-old patient in front of foot action. Gunshot wound. Here you can see the understandable confusion that occurred at the mall. The incident started with a fight between an 18-year-old and a 21-year-old gunman near Foot Action and J.C. Penney stores on the second level. Police now say 21-year-old Bradford did not likely fire rounds that injured the 18-year-old and that a second gunman is still at large. The teen was shot twice in the torso. An armed Hoover police officer who was working security at the mall confronted Bradford as he ran away from the scene and fatally shot him. A 12-year-old girl, described by police as a bystander, was shot once, but it's unclear by whom. We're still trying to get further information. This is cell phone video showing officers around two men in front of foot action. Be advised, the shooter is down at this time. The 12-year-old's mother, Julie Bennett, posted a statement on social media about the incident. In part, quote, they were upstairs outside of J.C. Penney when a fight broke out. Shots were fired, and one of the bullets hit Molly in the back. They took Molly to the operating room and made an incision from about two inches above her belly button to two inches below it. They found that none of her organs were damaged and that there was no internal bleeding. The bullet had gone in her back at an angle and lodged really close to her spine, end quote. She further explained that the surgeon told her she would have a CT scan Saturday morning to determine if there was any damage to her spine. But 24 hours later, mothers are still shopping at the Galleria. We were pretty apprehensive about coming. Mothers like Rebecca Harris. And you're a mother too, so how does this make you feel? It makes me feel really sad. Um, it also makes me feel really upset that um, everything has come to this level of violence now. Now, we just got an update on Molly not long ago from her mother who posted again on social media saying uh, the CAT scan showed that Molly has a fractured rib, uh, but her spine was not touched. The rib will heal on its own, uh, but it will be painful for a while. The bullet will stay where it is and shouldn't cause her any more trouble. She uh, continued uh, on with this post uh, explaining and telling people how she's really overwhelmed at the act of kindness from the community. We will stay on top of this story. Live in Hoover tonight, Corey McGinnis, CBS 42 News local coverage you can count on.